Hello, welcome back. This video is about the perfect formula for finding intrinsic value. This is a video response for Francisco Machado. He asks, how can I find out what is intrinsic value? So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe now so you can get my next video installment. So let's crack on. So intrinsic value is an ephemeral. It's kind of it changes all the time. Now, I could come up and give you a DCF, a discounted cash flow analysis calcul calculation. It would be really simple. It's a couple of inputs and it will come out of a decimal point, an accuracy of a decimal point. Now, it wouldn't really tell you much. Yeah, I could calculate and tell you, okay, you should discount the risk back at, let's say, 8% and the growth could be Y, you know, but it's, it's nonsensical. And the best formula that a person can use, possibly, uh, for debate, is something like the PEG formula. Now, the PEG formula is simply price divided by earnings divided by growth. Now, for example, let's say that a stock trades at, let's say, 15 times earnings. So that's a price to earnings of 15. And it's growing its earning power at 15%. In this example, price to earnings, 15, divided by the growth of 15, you get 1. It's a fairly valued stock, okay? Now, in the ideal scenario, you pay a price of 15 for a stock that's growing at 20. In this example, the peg number will be below 1. That's fantastic. You've got yourself an undervalued investment. If investing was that simple, then it would have all been arbitraged away and it would be impossible to actually make strong returns because you would just pick out the best peg ratio. So certain things that go into that consideration. The first critical one is the interest rate. Now, hypothetically, if interest rates are high, that means that investors might be saying, okay, I can get, let's say, a 6% safe return by going into government bonds, hypothetically. So I'm not going to be willing to pay a large multiple for a risky investment in public equities because I can just get a very safe return at 6%. So that would compress down across the plane price to earnings. It would just all come down. Conversely, on the other hand, so if interest rates come down as they are at the moment, that pushes up all the price to earnings ratios. So whereas before your price to earnings would be 15 would look kind of okay, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a reasonable investment. Now, if interest rates are rock bottom and you find a, a business that is growing at 15% with price to earnings of just 15, wow, you've found it like a terrific investment. It's just, it's like a no brainer. So what is a, a, a significant intrinsic value today, tomorrow could not be. So for example, the example I gave in the previous video was airlines. Last year, 2019, you know, if you find an airline trading at 20 times earning and it's kind of growing, it's, let's say, at about 3 to 5% its earning powers and it has some buybacks, it's not too leveraged, if there's a certain amount of monopoly, that would be a reasonable investment. But then this year, there's question marks. What, when is the, the business of the airline coming back to full capacity? Is it going to be this year in 2020? Is it going to be next year? So this kind of variability doesn't get incorporated in a peg ratio. So that's the problem with kind of trying to get a, a one formula fit all. Further complicating the situation, the business's operating margins contract and expand over the over course of years. Very few businesses are very, very stable. Businesses that are very, very stable are very, very predictable and they have a very high price to earnings. You can think of your examples as say like Apple, like that is a very stable operating margin. Alphabet, company that owns Google. So those type of businesses have very stable operating margins. They kind of, they kind of go through some volatility from quarter to quarter, but you know, full intents and purposes, if you look on average over the last three or five years, it kind of, it's, it's, it's a very stable business. So trying to find the intrinsic value is difficult. And that's why it's called 
the art of value investing because it's very simple for me to give you a formula like a peg ratio and to tell you okay you know the peg ratios of alphabet let's say alphabet is trading at approximately uh, 20 times earnings and it's for all intents and purposes it is actually growing at let's say 18 to 20 percent so in this example you're kind of paying at about 1.1 on a peg ratio so it's kind of it seems like a reasonably safe investment you can you could, could say then you could come up with the question of whether the department of justice is going to get involved and there's going to be antitrust laws and then it, it gets very complicated that's why investing is so so much fun and it's 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 a whole profession and it's it's a hobby and it's you know it's anyone and everyone gets involved because it's, it's just there's so many different moving parts so you know they say that it's simple but not easy because even if you know for example when to buy the stock it's going to be kind of challenging to come back out and when to exit the stock so i gave you the example of the island so i'll be using that again so warren buffett famously goes for the best investment is one that i can buy and hold forever now we've seen with apple not to buy and hold forever we've seen the airlines like he's out 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 he was like I'm out 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 so it's difficult to kind of come up with a perfect formula you got warren buffett that has been investing since 11 years old uh i can't remember his age is like 85 or something in the ballpark of that so it's like it's got about like a good 74 years or so of being the world's best investor and even then it's kind of like there's not a perfect formula to find out how to find out what the intrinsic value of the business is so if you want a very quick and fast and dirty rule use the peg ratio price divided by earnings divided by growth less than one good above one maybe not so good okay but then it can get a bit more complicated because the business is constantly changing the landscape is constantly changing so it becomes quite difficult to come up with a hard and fast rule so i hope you haven't found that useful and i'll see you next time thank you